Thank you, Mr. President. Um, there's been a lot of discussion, and I think it's been very eloquent as far as uh, the reasons, uh, both on why people are going to vote for it and why they're not. The one thing I just want to make it very uh, simple, uh, particularly in the sense of I think uh, the people in West Virginia would look at this, is that a balanced budget is when your revenue or income meets your expenditures. And matter of fact, I was just looking, um, that's what investors look at. The investor world looks at the definition of a balanced budget being a, a budget for which expenditures are equal to income. Doesn't say anything about going into your savings to say it's balanced. Matter of fact, Mr. President, the Financial Times, which is the equivalent to the Wall Street Journal, um, this, is, this is their definition of a balanced budget. It says a balanced budget occurs when an entity's spending matches its revenue during a period of time. An excess of revenue over spending is referred to as, as a budget surplus. And an excess of spending over revenue is referred to as a budget deficit. On average, over time, healthy governments run balanced budgets. Uh, persistent government deficits lead to a crisis of confidence in the ability of a government to pay back its debt. And it goes on to talk about persistent government deficits lead to accumulation of government debt, which leads to high uh, ratio of government debt overall and it creates uncertainty within the system. Now, when we say this is balanced, this is not accurate. It is not a balanced budget. We do not have the matching of what we have income or revenue meeting our expenditure. We're backfilling it with other money of one-time money. So this is not a structurally sound balanced budget as defined in the business world, as defined in the investment world, basically as defined in the people that are out there that struggle every day to make ends meet, to make sure they spend and, and, and get to be able to pay their bills. No. The senator from Canal had a very eloquent speech to talk about people are tired of politics. Tired of it. The double speaking, saying that we're doing this when actually we're not. We are not balancing a budget when our revenues, our income is not meeting our expenditures. Going in and raiding a rainy day fund or trying to grab money here to plug it is not a balanced approach. It's not. Now let me tell you, Mr. President, what really disgusts me about this is the fact of the matter is, is we had plenty of time to work on this during the regular session. There's only one thing that this legislature is required constitutionally to do. Only one during a regular session or an extended session, and that is to pass a structurally sound, balanced budget for the people of West Virginia. And we failed at it. Matter of fact, we really didn't discuss it until the very end, then we ran out of time. Now, I, I've, heard, I've heard statements of pointing fingers and say, well, the governor came back with revenue estimates that were changed and, and this and that and everything else. But then what happened the two months after that? Nothing happened. And then we come down here and we're in the third week and really, we're not doing anything any different than what we could have done at the end of the session or extended session of the regular session and pass the same type of budget. We really haven't made any changes, folks. We've really not cut all that many programs. We've not looked at any additional revenue sources that are coming in. No, we just go say, well, we're going to raid this fund over here and then call it a balanced budget and kick it down the road. And here's the other thing that disgusts me, Mr. President, 
is the fact of the matter is we're not making hard decisions because of politics campaigns well we'll have to wait until after the election when we dupe the people of West Virginia when we don't tell them the truth right now so after they elect or re-elect in November then they can have buyers remorse but guess what it's too late you have to wait for four years boy if I had only known what I know, knew now, then I knew back when I first voted, I wouldn't have voted for you. Let's be honest. We have a job here. We got to make tough decisions. And we're not. And each, and I've heard this down here, and the senator from Canal is right. I've heard it down here all the time. Well, Senator, wait till after the election. And then we'll come in here and we'll raise the taxes or wait till after elections. We'll do the cuts. Wait after till November and do it. But no, what we're doing is we're risking from the center from Morgan. We're risking our children's future of the idea of paying more for roads, for bridges, for schools. We're risking the fact that we're not going to be, they're not going to, we're heaping our debts on them by being irresponsible right now and not doing the job that we should be doing. Matter of fact, I hope the people of West Virginia hold us accountable for this vote because that's what this vote's about. A vote for this is a vote kicking the can down the road. A vote for this is making the people of West Virginia basically trying to dupe them, trying to fool them till after the election. A vote for this is playing politics, campaigning for other jobs or for re-election. It's all about campaigns. This is not what we're here for. Right now, we ought to be here to pass a structurally sound, balanced budget where the revenues, the income, meets the expenditures, and it's balanced. And we're not doing it. We're not doing with this. So, Mr. President, I submit to you, <laughs> let's, let's dispose of this and let's really do the real work. And those who can't, let somebody else step in and do it. But don't stand in the way for getting us a real structurally sound, balanced budget instead of a political farce that we're trying to sell the West Virginia people on. Thank you, Mr. President.